This is the lesson on the embouchure, which is the position your lips take when they approach the trumpet. And our student for this one is Laura Tellman. Mm -hmm. Laura's 15 years old and from Connecticut. And how long have you been playing, Laura? Five or six years. Oh, great. You have a private teacher, do you? Two. Yeah, we used to say in New York, you take private. <laughs> you have two private teachers. Great. Yep. Wonderful. Well, now you know, I must imagine that you know, that um, the position of the lips is important when you're playing the trumpet. And mm -hmm. the idea is to contract the muscles of the lips much like you were kissing toward the center, toward the center. Now, the way I usually demonstrate this is to take a pencil and put it right between my lips, <laughs> funny enough, and then contract everything toward the center so that the pencil stands straight out. The muscular movement should be toward the mouthpiece. The smile is a bad idea. Do you know why? No. Okay, well, you've got this mouthpiece and this piece of brass pushing against your lip. And if you smile, it thins out the lip, doesn't it? Yeah. So when you push the mouthpiece against it, it's going to close off all the blood vessels that supply blood to that part of your muscle. That means the muscle's going to get tired. Right. So if you concentrate the mouthpiece, the muscles toward the mouthpiece, you've got all that room for the blood to flow and you can stay strong. Now, I usually tell all my students this because it's kind of a cute story. <laughs> when I was a little boy, my folks gave me a Christmas present. And the Christmas present was a little tower that was connected with a line to an air pump. And I put a styrofoam ball in the tower, and I'd turn on the air pump, and the styrofoam ball would float up on the column of air. Mm -hmm. Well, the notes that you play on a trumpet are like that styrofoam ball. They, are, they float on the air column. So the first thing we do is have to support our note with air. And this, what we're talk, concerned about in this lesson is the movement of the muscles toward the mouthpiece. Now, will you go ahead? I happen to have a brand new pencil, never been touched by human hands. Right. Why don't you try and do what I just did with the pencil? Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, now are you using your chin and your teeth? Maybe. <laughs> yes, right just on the lips. Mm-hmm. Okay. You've got something to practice, yeah. don't you? The idea is to bring them together. It's not a very pretty face, I understand. <laughs> but it works. It's muscularly powerful. You come at the trumpet from a, from a point of power mm -hmm. rather than a point of weakness if you do it this way. Right. Now, I want you to try something. Well, we have oh. another explanation yet <laughs> before we begin. The trumpet, as you see it, with three valves was an experiment that began somewhere in the 1830s when they started adding valves to trumpets. Trumpets before then didn't have valves. And if you wanted to play in a different key, you needed to either put another slide in or to get another instrument. What makes this a B-flat trumpet is the length of the tubing. It's wound around so that it's manageable, but there's actually about five and a half feet of tubing in one of these trumpets without the valves. Now what happens when you have a trumpet without valves is that it only makes a certain set of notes. These notes are called the harmonic series and they're written out over here for you. I'll play it for you right now. This is open without any valves. All the notes you're going to get are these. <laughs> Those are the only notes you can make without valves on a trumpet. And what the valves do are to add lengths of tubing to that five and a half feet. So this second valve adds just enough tubing to drop the pitch one half step and play the next series of harmonics. <laughs> Okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're just going to use the open part okay. of our horn today for this lecture. What I want you to do is follow just as I do and play these notes. Just do that. Okay. Okay. Now you know what I noticed when I saw you play? What? a lot of movement around your chin. I want you to watch me do it again. Okay. See how much movement you see. How 
much. Not much. <laughs> Not much. That's the whole point I try to make is minimal movement. If you make a lot of movement in your face, mm -hmm. just to go from a C to a G and back down to a C, what are you going to do if I ask you to play a C to a <sighs> high C? <laughs> I mean, you know, you're going to have to move the whole horn around. Right, so right. you want to address the instrument and stay there. Okay. okay. Now I want you to do this for me. You remember those C? Can you hear the pitch? Mm -hmm. I want you to take the mouthpiece out of the horn. Okay. And I want you to do just this. A very slow slide. Okay. And I want you, as you go up, remember pushing, concentrating the muscles toward the mouthpiece. Okay. Push with your diaphragm just slightly. Mm -hmm. And concentrate your muscles to, but slide slowly up and down. Okay. Give it a shot. Okay, great. Now do it again, slower slide, and let's try and not make that movement that stopped the vibration. Right. Did you hear it? Yeah. Try it yeah. again. Okay. Why do you think the sound stopped that time? Because I moved my chin? No, no, because you didn't, you stopped your air. <laughs> you got to keep the air going first, then you got to think about your lip. Okay. So here it goes, once more, watch me. Slowly. Go ahead. All right. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> now watch what happens when you do just that, but you play the trumpet. Watch what happens to the trumpet. I made that same slide, mm -hmm. but you didn't hear all the notes in between, did you? Right. Because the trumpet can't play those. <laughs> it can only play the ones that physics let it play. Right. But you want to think about the slide because remember the notes got to be that styrofoam ball on the air column. Mm -hmm. So the air has to be straight. You know your lips come together. And the only place you're gonna have a problem, or find something funny about this exercise, mm -hmm. is when you go back down. Right. Because you will get more of a drop in the pitch when you go back down. You get Don't worry about that. I'm not asking you to play that way. I don't want you to play that way, but I do want you to practice that way. <laughs> Try it again for me. Look. All right. Excellent. Now, you did a little quiver. Yeah. A little quiver yeah. here. Try it one more time and let's try it. Just do it with the air. All right. And slide. Just think about the slide. work on it. You can get one more time. One <laughs> All right. more time. All right. Why did the vibration stop? Was it the air or the chin? It was the air. It was? It okay. was the air. You got to blow through it. Mm -hmm. You got to keep the air going all the time mm -hmm. and you got to think even when you're going down about bringing the lips together slightly. Right. <laughs> Give it a shot. Okay. Great. Now when you get home, and for those of you at home, you can print this music out from your computer. We'll do that exercise, just that to start, mm -hmm. through all seven of the harmonic series. So it'll be like this. <laughs> This is where you should have a mirror alongside you while you practice. Right. You should be looking for all of these things and if you see a great or a large movement in your chin or the side of your mouth, work again to make that min movement as minimal as possible. Okay. Okay? Okay. 
I think that's all we're going to cover in this one. Go work on your embouchure. Thank you, Laura. No problem.